Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome back to today's class. So, today we will be continuing discussing on catalytic cyclopropanation reaction. In the last class we have just introduced the topic, today we will discuss more about it and mainly the asymmetric version as well as, well as some uh, industrial application of this catalytic cyclopropanation reaction. See the, the cyclopropanation reaction is nothing but creating cyclopropane ring from an olefin. Traditionally it is done with carbene. Now if you have an olefin and you are reacting the carbene equivalent with it, one would expect then to form a cyclopropane ring. As we have seen that palladium catalyzed methods are usually used where diazomethane is the starting material from which palladium carbene is forming. On the other hand also it could be possible that rhodium or copper be used for such processes. Usually for rhodium and copper we do see diazoesters are used as starting materials. Today let us try to look at the cyclopropanation reaction in more detail and let us try to discuss it along its mechanism. At first we will look at one of the example and then how the metal carbene is forming from the diazomethane or diazoester and then how they are being utilized for the cyclopropanation reaction we are going to discuss that. Okay, let us discuss cyclopropanation. The usually from a carbene what we see that um, that it is reacted with olefin to give the cyclopropane ring and of course in these two center you can set the stereochemistry often we, are, we will be talking about the diastereoselective synthesis for, uh, for such compound. The common catalyst that is used for this purpose is palladium 2 for diazomethane as the starting material, rhodium 2 for and copper Y 1 for diazoester that is nothing but this reagent as a starting material. Now also it becomes important how these reactions are working, we can have presumed intermediate, intermediate for these cases which is nothing but a metal carbene equivalent of course that is what is forming but how it might will be forming let us look at from the diazomethane one so ch2 minus and n2 plus what you might will get in the process is m minus ch2 and n2 plus reagent overall you end up getting m ch2 plus of course n2 comes out from from these reactions so, what we have seen right now is diazomethane reacting with metal to give the metal carbene intermediate. Of course, one would argue maybe it is the free carbene that is doing the chemistry. Can we have some sort of mechanistic proposal or mechanistic proof evidence in support of metal carbene formation? Of course, nowadays um, there are a lot of study been done, we will we'll discuss the first example where such metal carbene formation could have been possible or some evidence has been gathered in favor of metal carbene formation. Let us look at one more example to discuss uh, this metal carbene uh, as, the, as the reactive intermediate for this cyclopropanation reactions. Okay. So, the one examples that we would like to discuss is where you have a chiral enantio pure auxiliary along with the substrate okay. and now with this substrate if you are taking 
um, you know a propene or you know the olefin double bond what you would expect in presence of diazomethane and palladium acetate to as catalytic amount of course, to form in presence of the chiral auxiliary, chiral auxiliary is in here, this is the chiral enantiopure auxiliary and from there on you would imagine to form a cyclopropane ring because this CH2 is coming into picture and overall you get the product that one would expect. Now, in this case we get 93 is to 7 diastereomeric air. So, therefore, 86 percent DE which is quite interesting for such reactions. Now, still one would argue for these reactions how this reaction might be happening, how, what would be the uh, procedure, is it the free carbene that is forming or the metal carbene intermediate is generated. Uh, during these reactions. In order to prove that or the first evidence that came forward for, for such involvement of a metal carbene intermediate is, is the one where copper is used. Let us try to look at the first example where metal carbene could have been proposed or uh, the evidence has been gathered in support of metal carbene intermediate for the cyclopropanation reactions. So, the first example of homogeneous reaction, homogeneous transition metal catalyzed enantio selective reaction. Okay. The one example that comes into mind or in the literature uh, that is the diazoester reaction in presence of copper catalyst to give the cyclopropane that one would expect in this case and that is this reaction. Now, still even if you are getting this product cyclopropane that does not mean that um, you know it is involved the copper carbene as an intermediate rather than free carbene. Perhaps one way to prove that at least that was the first evidence gathered in favor of metal carbene is if you add a chiral ligand, if you introduce a chiral ligand for the metal center in this case for copper, can we get any enantio selectivity? If you get any enantio selectivity during the process, it, it could be suggestive of the fact that metal carbene is forming. If it was a free carbene, you would not expect any enantio selectivity during this reaction, during the reaction what we have just drawn. So, if any EE is there, then one can argue in favor of a metal carbene species being the reactive intermediate for the cyclopropanation reaction. Let us look at what has happened in presence of the carbene as a um, you know in presence of a chiral catalyst used for this copper catalyzed reaction. What if it is via a free carbene, the free carbene that you are expecting is this one. Okay. So, this is your free carbene or whether this is forming copper cat copper carbene intermediate is forming. Now, of course, this you can name as copper carbene, right. This is done by Nojaki by the way. Now, one a chiral ligand L star is used, a chiral ligand is used. What was observed is a modest, very, very modest 6 percent EE. So, this is the reaction that then proposed that since in presence of a chiral catalyst, one can achieve some sort of EE although very modest at best, but still this is suggesting that carbene is involved, metal carbene is involved, it is not the free carbene that is doing the chemistry. Indeed, the metal carbene is the intermediate that is involved 
for the cyclopropanation reaction. Okay. Now, let us try to look at one of the example where it is used the cyclopropanation reactions are used in industrial scale and therefore, one can justify the importance of these processes. In, indeed, in medicinal chemistry lot of these cyclopropanation reactions are used quite routinely. Okay. Let us look at one of those medicinally important or medicine uh, that is utilized or produced by these cyclopropanation reactions. So, industrial application. In industry, this is a reaction which is quite popular where diazoester is used in presence of a copper chiral catalyst to get this intermediate which is an advanced intermediate for the drug that all of us are familiar with that is in the market that is called the silastatin. Okay. This is the structure of silastatin and uh, as you know silastatin is used as antibiotic in, in, in conjunction with carbapenem which inhibits the enzyme dehydropeptidase. Okay. This is the silastatin where we are synthesizing by the cyclopropanation method and once again this is used as in conjunction with carbapenem to inhibit the enzyme dehydropeptidase. Okay, so, these are antibiotic combination. Now, so this is uh, this is again silastatin, silastatin. Now, of course, this is utilized and used and synthesized in multigram scale or rather kg scale. Silastatin is a active component of the antibiotic. Now, by this simple cyclopropanation reaction, the main stereochemistry is set where, where we, we have seen that uh, <coughs> this uh, copper catalyzed uh, chiral copper catalyst is used for the cyclopropanation reaction. Right. From there, it, it can be further modified to get, get the silastatin compound. Now, of course, in addition to cyclopropane as the material, one can think of cyclopropene preparation in those cases as one would expect we cannot use olefin right we must use alkyl instead of olefin if we are to get cyclopropene by similar method that we have seen for cyclopropane reaction okay let's try to synthesize cyclopropene ring which is of course it's much more um, unstable and uh, you know compared to cyclopropane how cyclopropane can be propene can be synthesized by utilizing the same technique. So, let us just directly discuss asymmetric asymmetric cyclopropanation reaction cyclopropenation reaction cyclopropene ring formation we would like to discuss. The reagent as, uh, as we tried to discuss we need is a alkyne an alkyne and let us say for example, diazoester or rather amide let us say for example, and a chiral rhodium catalyst in this case is used to give the cyclopropene. I hope you can appreciate this method for this cyclopropene synthesis. As you know cyclopropane ring strain is nearly something like 25 or 28 um, kcal per mole and cyclopropene is nearly 50 to 50 to 60 kcal per mole. Okay. So, this is very very um, you know very very uh, strained molecule cyclopropene compared to cyclopropane. So, overall in this part what we have seen today is um, the cyclopropanation reaction and then expanded the cyclopropanation methodology for the cyclopropenation reaction which are even more energy demanding and, uh, and usually it is much more difficult to stabilize and prepare the cyclopropene. But 
the a rhodium for example, a rhodium catalyzed when asymmetric version of this catalyst can be prepared by utilizing simple carbene type of chemistry. Okay. Both the cyclopropanation and cyclopropanation reactions utilize carbene or metal carbene to be precise as a reactive intermediate for these reactions. We have seen some evidences in favor of metal carbene as the reactive intermediate as opposed to the free carbene for these cases. These small molecules cyclopropane and cyclopropene are indeed very important structural building block for pharmaceutical or even for uh, other industrial use and of course, for academic use as well. So, in the next part we will try to discuss the carbon carbon various carbon carbon bond formation reaction. Okay. Of course, a carbon carbon bond formation one can think of by various approach, but most often when a difficult carbon carbon bond formation is talked about for example, sp 2 sp 2 bond formation reaction or you know sp 3 sp bond formation reaction sp sp 3 bond formation reaction sp 3 sp 3 carbon carbon bond formation reaction these reactions are extremely challenging and therefore, um, actually there exists no other organic transformation that can do it except using the organo metal chemistry or organo metallic intermediate. So, organo metallic intermediate has kind of revolutionized the way these carbon carbon bond formations are looked at. Nowadays it is you know indispensable to synthesize pharmaceuticals, industrial other molecule, different, different academic purposes wherever you can think of synthesizing or introducing a new carbon carbon bond usually the first thing that comes into mind is the organo metallic chemistry where organo metallic intermediate is doing wonder to do this carbon carbon bond formation. Let us look at some of those example how one might would be thinking to prepare it both in industry and in academia that would be our next part of the discussion. Okay. So, palladium catalyzed first we will discuss the palladium catalyzed method of course, nowadays not only palladium uh, a number of other metals has been used for this carbon carbon bond formation reaction since historically and overall uh, expansion wise palladium played a key role for this difficult carbon carbon bond formation reaction. We will try to mainly focus on the carbon carbon bond formation utilizing palladium as the reactive intermediate. Okay. So, palladium catalyzed coupling reaction. Okay. So, most importantly synthesis of C S P 2 C S P 2 bonds right. Well, let us try to think about forming a biphenyl ring can this be formed very easily without invoking organometallic intermediate I guess not can one synthesize this sp2 sp2 this sort of bond or even you know this sort of bond what how one would think of forming these bonds remained completely under difficult situation and of course you know a number of drug molecule such as this which we am trying to draw here is a lipitor where you see this is one carbon carbon sp2 sp2 bond formation and another for example, um, this one another carbon carbon bond formation and you have a long chain of course, over there for these processes and overall CO2H for example, overall these two difficult carbon carbon bond formation reactions this is Lipitor are carried out by, by, by doing the 
um, so called cross coupling reaction or palladium catalyzed cross coupling reactions. Now, of course, for cross coupling reactions as you know the reagent usually that is used is uh, your organohalide reagent right. For example, aryl bromide, aryl chloride, aryl iodide of course, nowadays this aryl diagonium or even aryl carboxylic acid. Usually you have a aryl halide that is used traditionally and then depending on the other reagent, other coupling partner, the reaction are differing in their name right. We are most familiar with for example, Suzuki reaction right, which utilize aryl boronic acid as the coupling partner. Now, once that coupling partner is changed of course, aryl boronic acid in conjunction with aryl halide. Now, once the aryl boronic acid changed to aryl tin reagent that reaction is called the Stille coupling right. So, the other coupling partner keeping the aryl halide constant if you change the other coupling partner the name of the reaction because those are the usual name reaction, name of the reaction are changing. So, aryl tin reagents would be called Stille reaction, aryl um, boronic acid reaction, Suzuki reaction. If one is using aryl zinc reagent that is called Nigishi reaction. If it is a silyl reagent, aryl silyl reagent that is called the Hyama reaction. If it is you know lithium, okay, aryl organolithium reagent and th those are called Kumada coupling right, lithium or magnesium uh, reagent is used then those are called Kumada coupling. So, with all these name reactions we will systematically discuss their pros and cons where is where a particular um, this bond formation carbon carbon bond formation reaction good at, where they fail, what would be a ideal reagent that we would like to or ideal type of reaction that one would like to use both in industry and in academia those are the one we will be discussing subsequently. Now, let us define those organometallic reagent and the name reaction because those will be coming pretty often for our discussion let us try to nail it down. Okay. So, cross coupling reactions this is some part. Um, we will discuss in detail cross couplings. Usually it is a R x, R is early days it is aryl alkenyl. Okay. Nowadays of, of course, uh, even the aliphatic are used. Clo a halide x partner could be chloride, bromide, iodo, O S O 2 C F 3 and so on and your the other partner based on which the name reaction is changing to give you overall R R prime is the one which is usually called the transmetallating e reagent. Let us say we are using palladium catalyst of course, we can use other such as nickel, copper, cobalt etcetera. We need various additive depending on the reaction condition. Overall, if it is a lithium and magnesium reagent that is called Kumada coupling. If it is boron reagent that is called Suzuki coupling right, Suzuki reaction. If it is tin that is Stille reaction. If it is zinc that is Nigishi reaction and if it is silicon that is the Hyama reaction. Okay. Overall then we have these at least 5 different type of reagent or 5 different type of starting material that is used for example, palladium catalyzed carbon carbon bond formation process. Now, overall there is a synergy, there is some sort of harmony among these all 5 different type of reaction of course, we will discuss separately. Um, the palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen bond formation or famously known as Buckwald Hartwig type of coupling and other reaction that is also under the cross coupling banner is the Sunagasira reaction for example. So, those we will discuss separately let us just simply we are trying to discuss these 5 reaction first and then we will come, come to those other reaction which are extremely 
uh, useful for industry as well as it in academic setup. We will first try to look at if there is some sort of you know some sort of general mechanism for all these reaction all or each of these reaction on their own right have caught the imagination of the scientist in terms of its application it becomes really widely used at this point, but there exist a number of issues almost with every reaction. We will try to touch upon those and the development that has been carried out over many many decades uh, du during our time that we would like to discuss. Before going into details, let us try to look at a generalized mechanism for all these processes. So, generalized mechanism. Okay. For, for these purposes, we will have a palladium reagent as I was saying it is not necessary to use palladium, but we will use palladium for a general mechanism. Mechanism is oxidative addition is the first step okay, uh, with R x to give a ligand palladium intermediate where R and x are attached with it. From here we get ln palladium R and R prime where this R prime is coming from this is where the transmetallating reagent that is organoborane reagent, organolithium, magnesium, organotin, organo zinc or organo silicon reagents are important. Here M and X gives you M X overall in the process we get R R prime as the product formation that is the reductive elimination and this step is called transmetallation. So, it is a oxidative addition, transmetallation and reductive elimination. Um, so, these are the key approaches for, for these processes. Overall, we do see that we, we do have a process where starting from a starting from an intermediate when we, we have we have a lower valent intermediate for example, palladium 0 from there on an oxidative addition with organohalide for example, aryl bromide gives rise to a palladium 2 intermediate okay, at which now we see a transmetallation. So, after oxidative addition transmetallation usually proceeds. With, uh, with the R and R prime both the partner carbon partner on the palladium keeping the palladium 2 oxidation state intact. So, palladium 0 goes to palladium 2 in, pre, in, in during the oxidative addition and during transmetallation palladium 2 oxidation state is maintained. Subsequently, we do see that this um, palladium 2 intermediate undergo a carbon carbon bond formation that means the product formation step between those two R and R prime. So, 2 sp 2 sp 2 carbon center for example, uh, undergoes reductive elimination to give palladium 2 to palladium 0 formation that regenerates the catalyst and one can see the product formation or so, uh, so to speak the carbon carbon bond formation reaction that occurs subsequently. So, by doing so, we, uh, we are able to show that it is a palladium 0 to 2 0 catalytic cycle. So, 0 to catalytic cycle that is involved and during these processes then one uh, during the transmetallation process usually one would need a base that we will discuss. For other metal a similar plus 2 oxidation state if it is a for example, I mean nickel 1, it could be nickel 1, 3 catalytic cycle, nickel is a little problematic uh, case sometime depending on the substrate combination actually metal mechanism can change. It is usually undergo or it is usually proposed to undergo a radical type mechanism, but nonetheless you know it is a overall plus 2 oxidation state change usually pred gets predicted for these kind of reactions. But you know it is extremely difficult to put a single mechanism for all the type of cross coupling reaction that we do see, but the one we discussed 
usually captures the field but not necessarily exactly correct for all the reaction. This is a oversimplified mechanism that we have drawn for all the different type of uh, cross coupling reaction or carbon carbon bond forming reaction we are going to discuss. We will discuss each of those topic in detail. I might will be discussing briefly about 1 to 3 of these reaction and then come back and discuss this reaction in greater detail. Okay. We will dis start discussing briefly the Suzuki reaction and then, uh, then maybe the Nigisi reaction in a bit and uh, Stili reaction uh, in the next class briefly. We might will again after that we might will come back to this type of reaction in more detail to give you better idea about these processes. Keep studying these cross coupling reactions and their utility in, in, in the synthetic setup. Okay, bye-bye.